By this point, it won't come as a surprise to hear that we love gimbals. We've talked about the Movi extensively across all our videos, and we bring one to almost every project that we work on. But if there's a drawback to professional gimbals, it's their sheer size and lack of portability. It's not a problem when shooting wedding or commercial projects, but it is a bit unmanageable when shooting lifestyle, vlogging, or travel projects. So we were happy when doing some research for our upcoming Hawaii trip to find that the Crane 2 has a load capacity of 7 pounds. That's well over the weight limit of the C100 with most L non-telephoto glass. So we got one and we're immediately impressed with the build quality. It comes in this awesome durable travel case. The metal finish is really nice and you can tell it's well built and the design is minimal and clean. They use numbered markings like the Ronin series, technically to reduce setup time by noting your measurements for your exact camera package. We never really use these though as we find that even with the exact same camera setup, your axes will always change slightly, but it is a good way to get your balance pretty close before fine tuning. Anyways, we got the crane and we take the grip off of the C100 and are excited to fly it, only to find that it's impossible to balance the tilt axis. There's not a single position in which the camera reaches anything remotely close to weightlessness in the center of the stage. And while the tilt axis is the main culprit, we had troubles with all the axes because of how unbalanced the entire rig was. It just seemed like the C100 was too heavy or too tall to properly work with the crane. So we panicked a little, and the more we looked into it, the more we realized that there's very little convincing documentation on pairing a C100 with a crane too. But we knew that people were flying a 1DX2, a camera that's around the same height as the C100 and a couple hundred grams heavier. So here's what we did. And after some research, we found that this is what a lot of other people are doing with the 1DX as well. The little metal bar on the tilt vertical axis is just too short to properly balance. But by using a hex key to unscrew the circular metal housing that the bar sits on, you can move the tilt axis to a point where the C100 actually balances. Go little by little while pulling on the tilt bar until you're able to slide it past the locking bar keeping it in place. Leave the screws loose enough that you can adjust the bar as needed, but lock it in place with the knob. From here, you balance it as usual. Start with your tilt axis, then your tilt vertical, your roll, and finish with your pan. When you're 100% on the balance, you can take your camera package off and tighten the screws, knowing that all you have to balance is your tilt axis when you mount the camera again. A couple of notes. You'll always want to bring the hex key with you for readjustments and rebalancing on the fly. Also, we don't know if it's part of the Crane 2 design or another balancing quirk, but the roll axis always returns to the horizontal position. It doesn't seem to affect the footage, and when connected to a computer, the software is telling us the axis is perfectly balanced. And lastly, Shein, or Zayin, or Zayin, we can't find exactly how you say that, but they make an official gravity adjustment plate for the 1DX. It should in theory work with the C100, so we've linked it in the description below in case you want an official fix instead of this little hack. Last month, we took the Crane 2 up to Charlevoix, this beautiful little mountain town in Quebec, and found that shooting slow motion at 60 frames per second, it worked perfectly. And yes, we did get engaged up there too. Well, we haven't had enough time to shoot with it, and we usually like to have a lot more time with the tool before offering up a conclusion. What we can say is that it's a pretty solid portable gimbal, and we're so excited to use it on our YouTube and our travel videos. It's definitely got its quirks. It's more prone to footstep wobbles, and occasionally we've noticed a weird jitter on the pan axis when turning with it. We are currently trying to figure out if that's just on the follow mode, but overall, we found that warp stabilizer can usually take care of these issues. We're also just spoiled by the Movi Pro and how fluid we are with it, but that's a system that we've been working on for almost five years, so we're still in the growing pain stage with the crane, finding out what mode and what parameters work best. At this point, we're just amazed that a decent gimbal can be put into such a small package, one that we can throw in or on top of a camera bag or carry-on. We'll check back in after Hawaii, but until then, 
Subscribe below, follow us on Instagram, and see you soon.